To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Please stand clear of the doors. For favor, we invite you to the day. This is a wild ride in the whisper. When in this strange trap, dawn is changing. Hello and welcome to Miles from Main Street, your Far From Disney podcast. My name is Mikhailo. And I'm Brian. And we're here to talk about Disney World. But especially coping away from Disney. Which we know a lot about being from the Midwest. Here at Miles from Main Street, our preferred travel agency is Magical Vacations by Kimberly. Kimberly is a Disney expert and can handle all of your Disney planning needs. She can also plan Universal and all major cruise lines. Contact Kimberly at Magical Vacations by Kimberly at Yahoo.com. And find her on Facebook and Instagram under Magical Vacations by Kimberly. So today on Miles from Main Street, we have a little bit of history for you from our resident history buff here. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And since I spent the last two episodes rambling about the trip, I thought it, it was only fair to give Brian his time in the sun. It's about time, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, we've been talking about doing this history episode for quite a while. Um, so I'm excited to get started. The uh, Hopefully this will spin out. If you guys enjoy it, you know, let us know. Um, I'd like to do a series where we kind of take Walt Disney's history and how it relates back to the parks. Um, so today we're, we're starting with Marceline and early life for Walt. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a fun one. I'm excited. Let me dig in. <laughs> All right. So back when uh, I started getting into Disney, um, I, I kind of was getting tired with the same old trope about when you go to the parks, you'll want to do this. And so I wanted to start finding more information and um, Walt's early life kind of interested me. How did he go from being a kid to a uh, successful uh, mogul, business mogul, if you would. Um, so I started digging into his early life and, and learning about his story and uh, in 2018, my wife and I took a trip for our anniversary to Missouri. And on the way home, I said, we got to stop in Marceline. It was pretty much on the way. It wasn't too far out of our way. So we went to Marceline, Missouri. And for you guys, this is where uh, Walt spent a few years of his life. He was there from about the age of four to eight. So Walt was quoted as saying, more things of importance happen to me in Marceline than have happened since, or are likely to in the future. Marceline was a big piece of history for Walt. Uh, he did a lot in Marceline. So I got to go there. Um, and it's a small, sleepy little town, kind of in the middle of nowhere, uh, right along the highway. Um, so he had arrived there in 1906 with his family. He had uh, his mom and dad and Roy was with them and the two older brothers were there for a short time, um, but they left kind of quickly. They had reached the age of 16 and were a little tired of Elias's, their father's uh, work that they would put them through. And so they took off. Um, so it was kind of the three of them. They lived on an apple farm and they grew uh, Wolf River apples. And they were said to be some of the biggest apples that could be found in the area. A lot of people came from all around to get their apples. Uh, so that was the time he spent there, four to eight, uh, which I have always found that interesting. It seems like really young to have such an impression put on him. Um, so he, you know, they moved on to Kansas City from there, which we'll get to Kansas City in another episode. Uh, lots happened to him in, in for him in Kansas City. So in the early 50s, the uh, town wanted to dedicate some stuff to Walt Disney and, and to the company to Roy as well. Um, 
they had a very strong relationship with Walt. Uh, and they want, so they wanted to bring him in and Rush Johnson was on the town board at the time and they were trying to decide where are they going to put Walt and, and his family uh, to stay when they come to visit. Uh, so they decided to put them with Rush and Inez Johnson, which the reason for it was that they were the only house in town that had air conditioning. So that's where they got to stay. And they uh, they stayed, uh, Walt and Lillian slept in Kay Mallon's bedroom. Kay was Russian, or is Russian, uh, Inez's daughter. She was about eight, so she had to give up her bed to them, um, which she loves telling that story. I was able to meet her when we were there, uh, and she's just a really fun person to talk to. I also got to meet Inez there too. Uh, she gave us the, our tour, our opening tour to the museum when we walked in. Uh, really cool uh, person. Uh, so much she could talk about and was willing to talk about if you had any questions. Um, so the museum is inside the train depot where the Santa Fe Rail Railroad used to come by. And most of the artifacts within that museum come from Ruth Disney, Walt's younger brother or younger <laughs> sister, excuse me. Uh, and so they have a lot of recordings. They have a lot of um, different items from Ruth that she had saved for over the years. And she knew it needed to go somewhere and decided it needed to go to Marceline. Um, the museum is really cool to visit. They have uh, two floors of the train depot completely full of different things uh, from models of Disneyland and uh, different paintings. There's these beautiful murals that with, from an artist they work with. And they also have a wing dedicated to collections from fans. We, didn't, we did a couple episodes about collecting um, and these guys are taking in stuff from people and, and they kind of rotate it out and it's been it was only supposed to be like a one-year thing but it's been so popular they're just continuing to do it so that's really cool to see too um next to the train depot is ripley park and one of the things that walt did uh, after disneyland had opened was that they had midget Utopia, which was a small a uh, car ride, which allowed kids to drive cars on their own, kind of like the Tomorrowland Speedway, uh, but the adults couldn't fit in the cars, so the kids <laughs> got to do it on their own. Um, well, progress is progress, and they had no use for the Midgetopia anymore, so they sent the entire thing to Marceline, <laughs> and the town worked quickly to put something together uh, where they could actually run the ride. Um, and after a while, it became too expensive to do that anymore. So it got, it went into storage. Well, the museum kind of took that over and they have, they still have the cars. They have one on display in the museum, which is, it's beautifully kept and looks wonderful. Um, but they've created a walking park in, or walking path in Ripley Park next door, um, which just opened, uh, I believe, last year it may have opened um so something else for people to check out when they go it's the exact um design of the original ride you just get to walk it instead of them having to maintain these cars so uh like i said it's a small sleepy town there's not a lot going on we were there on a sunday and everything was pretty much closed up there wasn't a whole lot going on uh, we got lucky while we were there the there was somebody a couple of parents i'm not sure what they were up to but they were inside the elementary school which is dedicated to walt um so we pulled up to take a look at what they had outside and i saw these people there and my wife's going just just no just leave and <laughs> I'm like no the i don't know so i started driving away and i'm like no i should i should go back and ask so we went back and I got out of the car and my wife's like, I'm not getting out of the car. 
<laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I walk up to him and they're like, yeah, we were thinking that you'd probably enjoy coming inside. So when they contacted Walt about dedicating the elementary school to him, they he was just thrilled by this. He couldn't believe that they would want to do something like this. So he sent out one of his favorite artists from the company, Bob Moore, to do some work inside the building. So when you walk in the front door, in the floor, there is a Mickey Mouse done. Um, and there's different, uh, I, I guess they're kind of like wood cutouts of different characters all along the, the uh, wall right there in front of you as you walk in, along with some pictures from the vacation and when Walt was there. And then they're like, yeah, this is great too, here, but you're going to want to go into the gym too, which looks like they kind of use it as a cafeteria as well. So we go in there and there's these amazing pictures. One of um, Mr. Toad in his car, there's, you know, Snow White and the dwarfs and all this wonderful art up there as well. So, you know, I, I walk in and, um, well, first of all, they said, yeah, you should come in. Is your wife in the car? I said, yeah. And they, they, they waved to her, come on, come on, let's go, you know? <laughs> um, and it was just awesome how they accepted us in so quickly and let us come into the building and look around. Um, so yeah, we got to go in. I took a million pictures as fast as I could. I felt bad because they were getting ready to leave and they were letting us do this. So I was snapping pictures as quick as I could. And um, my wife actually talked to him a little more than I did. And I kind of wish I would have spent a little more time asking them if they knew anything else about it. But um, So yeah, we got to go in there. And then when you walk out, uh, there's a flagpole which had been used at the Squaw Valley Olympics in 1960. And he was able to, he, Walt was one of the uh, designers of a lot of things around the Olympics, the, some of the programming going on. So he was able to donate a flagpole to the school. So their flagpole was used at the Olympics. That's <laughs> crazy to me. And he also donated um, a lot of playground equipment to the school, which, you know, that, that was a long time ago, not a lot of it's left at this point. Um, so they also dedicated a pool and the muni municipal park, um, which is kind of out of, just as you're leaving town, on the other side of town from where the museum is. Um, not a lot left there. I went and took a picture of the municipal park sign. Um, there's a pond. Uh, so not a lot you know, there to see, but the farm is still there. And it's a private residence at this point, so you can't go in um, the house. So you can't go in the house, but you know you can see where he lived. They have some signage up, and uh, the neat thing about the house is that they did add on, but they've kept a lot of the original part of the building, even though they've added on. They were very careful about that. Um, and what I liked in, about that is that when it's a story that Ruth would always tell. Um, they came home one day and there was a barrel of tar sitting there and Walt said, this would be great to paint with. So he and Ruth sat there and painted with tar on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, Are you sure about this? Oh, it'll wash right off. Well, of course the tar didn't wash off. And the story goes is that um, dad was so mad about it that he refused to take it down. He left it there. <laughs> so here we have like you know it, now it's covered up which probably will help preserve it but you know we have one of the original early artworks from Walt <laughs> <laughs> uh, they also have the a barn they remade a barn um, based on how he remembered it so his home in California he had a barn built as how he remembered it from when he was growing up and they have built a replica of that barn on the property. It's really cool to go in there. Um, it's kind of a hot box, so you don't want to spend a lot of time in there, but people are allowed to sign their name. Um, so you can write your name on it. You can look around. There's a lot of recognizable names in there. Um, and then, so 
when we were there, it was about two weeks after D23 had visited. And they had they had kind of done this big thing with a bus load of people. I think they actually had two buses of people come in from D23 and they gave them a big tour of the town. And it was something I'd wanted to do, but I missed out on getting tickets. Um, so one of the things that, that they did was they, um, they had some students from the school prepare a kind of a history of the town or, you know, like a little play type of thing that didn't last very long. Well, they were moving this into a um, little production that was being used for teachers as part of uh, further education for teachers. So we happened to be walking out to the barn at the time that they were doing a quick rehearsal before the teachers arrived for this. So we got to see that done. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I told my wife, I said, you realize how lucky we are? We got into the elementary school. We're seeing this production that D23 did. We're basically getting the same treatment that D23 did and I didn't have to pay the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was near the Dreaming Tree, which is where uh, Walt did a lot of what he called belly botany, where he would sit there and he would lay, lie on the stomach and, and think of all these crazy stories he wanted to come up with. Mm -hmm. um, so Kansas Avenue is the main drag that goes through Marceline. And they changed a portion of the street to Main Street USA. And the reason that that's important is that Marceline for Walt was a big influence to how he built Main Street USA. So they, in Marceline, the, the residents really appreciate that. And so they changed a couple of blocks to Main Street USA. Um, there's a few different buildings there that you can kind of see the resemblance. Some of the original drawings that were done for Disneyland and for Main Street USA was, you can really see the resemblance to um, the buildings that are on Main Street USA in Marceline. Uh, if you think about the Coca-Cola building on, on Main Street in Disneyland, it's got a corner door that opens up. It, now that's a refreshment center there is the Zercher building, which was a jewelry store for many, many years, up until the late 60s, early 70s, I believe. And the so the building is almost a you know almost an exact copy to the Coca the Coca-Cola building is is an exact copy to Zercher. So um, and one of the cool things is that we saw this Coca-Cola mural on the side of the building. Um and so it, there's kind of some confusion as to if that was done later, if that was original, how that came about with Walt using it at Disneyland. Um, but since then, they've they brought in the Coca-Cola company to redo that mural. So it's bright, it's beautiful again, um, and it, it looks great. So uh, we walked up and down the street the two blocks um it's little shops you know there's like an antique shop um maybe a little corner store type of thing where you might get um i believe there's one that sells overalls that walt had originally bought there like his first pair of overalls were bought at this store well you can still buy something like that um but the uptown theater is there and again walt loved that Marceline loved him. So he wanted to pay them back a lot. So in 1956, he brought the movie, The Great Locomotive Chase to Marceline. And that was the, the world premiere was there. So they came in, he and Roy to the theater, packed full of people. The children sang the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse song to them. And then for 24 hours straight, they ran the movie so that all of the town folk could get in there and see the movie. Um, and it was free. Uh, all of it was free to everyone in town. Uh, that I thought that was really cool. They had a world premiere. Um, but that wasn't the only one. Disney decided in 1998, they needed to bring the spirit of Mickey back 
or bring that there as well. So they did a world premiere of the spirit of Mickey mm. in that theater as well. Um, and it's cool when you go to this theater, it, you know, it's bored. It's not really used. Um, and so I was looking in the windows, the ticket window, um, a goofy plush is sitting in there, kind of a bigger one, kind of like the ticket taker. Um, and you look in and the concession stand is still there. It looks like maybe it's used once in a while, but laying on the floor in the back, um, you can see the spirit of Mickey sign sitting on the floor there that was used like it was used for that um so that, that's really cool like again i wasn't able to get into any of this stuff it was a sunday afternoon but just being able to see that stuff and see and take the pictures and know what happened there and know that walt had been there like that was cool to me i was enjoying that like crazy so <laughs> <laughs> um so if you think about main street usa You've got your theater on the street. You've got your Coca-Cola building. You've got, um, you know, they had a magic shop. They had, they had the clothing stores originally. Um, they even had a, a lingerie shop at one time, you know, <laughs> like it all was like a normal main street USA, you know? Um, so like I said, I want to take this history and I want to bring it back to the park. Now I'm more familiar with Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World, so I am going to use that right now. Uh, I have not been able to get out to Disneyland yet, uh, so hopefully someday that'll happen. <laughs> so if you're listening and you can, go ahead and close your eyes. Let me try to take you through this a little bit, all right? So we just walked in from the tap style. We're walking into the Magic Kingdom. We see the Mickey Mouse that's in the floral arrangement on the train station there, okay? Maybe you take a picture, smile a couple times for it. Um, and now it's time to enter. So we go under these tunnels under the train station, right? What do we see first? We see posters along the walls. It's very closed down. It's kind of um dark you can't see very well out the other end of the tunnel but you see these posters what are on the posters you see Pla splash mountain we see uh mickey's philhar magic we see space mountain we see all the different things that we're going that we know is in the park that we're going to be seeing these are your previews to the movie okay and now you start getting to the end of the tunnel and it opens up and now you've got your town hall on one side. You've got your uh, fire station. Um, you've got a restaurant. You've got your kind of town square right there in the middle with your flagpole, which if you don't know, they do a, um, a flag retreat every night. And they honor a veteran there. I think that's really cool. Um, so then we start walking down the street. Uh, you've got your Emporium on the left, which has that corner door on it. And then you've got the bakery, again, another corner door uh, on the right. A little interesting fact here is that the um, the food is on the right. They've done research and they found the people as they walk in, they stay on the right side and they find the people are hungry at first. They start <laughs> smelling the food, so they're going to grab something to eat. Now on the left side, you've got the Emporium because on the you're going to grab all your souvenirs on your way out. So that's why that whole side of the street is now the Emporium store. Um, so we're walking along and we look up at our windows above these stores and we see different people's names on them. We see Ken Anderson. He's got a bait shop. We see Frank Wells and the seven summits because he was a mountain climber and it's actually the highest window because of that reason. And uh, you see Charles Ridgway, who was a, a, who was a publicist for um, Disney. He worked in marketing, opened, I don't know, a few different parks all across the world. Uh, and, and incidentally, one of my favorite 
uh, guys to read about, he um, kind of got me into Disney. He was one of the interviews I had first listened to where he detailed some of the stories behind Disney and some of the things. And that really brought me into getting to know this information. Um, so then you get to Center Street. Center Street used to go all the way across. There was a west side and an east side. Now it's just on the one side. And not a lot of people go down there because you're kind of running past to get onto your rides and you know wherever where whether you're going to splash or space mountain whatever it might be so i but i would encourage you to go down there not only is there a quiet little place to go there's some bathrooms down there if you need them um but the music teacher window is down there and i love this little tidbit if you listen closely you can hear a music lesson going on You'll hear a little bit of the singing going on. Um, and so you, it's, it's just fun to go find those little details. There's also carts along there that are just covered in flowers. And I think they're so cool. Um, they're great for pictures. And uh, the, you know, the, you'll find your um, silhouette artist down there too. So these are the credits. The windows are your credits telling you who worked on the, you know, in, in Disney world, it's, you know, people that worked on Disney world, it's, it's different people in Disneyland. Um, but Elias is on both sides of the country the, he has one that's like general contractor because he did work for Disney for a little while. And it's kind of a nod that Walt wanted to give his father. Um, so they, you know, they really do put a whole story together for you and it always has been one of the um lands that has been said to be the most comfortable the guests are the most comfortable in because it's and it's most memorable um Mikayla, can you tell me what date it always is on main street usa uh i believe it's the fourth of july it is Yes. And how do you know that? Uh, <laughs> I just know that because I've, I've heard it a million times. Uh, well, there's buntings coming from the windows, the yeah, red, white, yeah. and blue buntings. Um, and they've got all the flags flying on top of the buildings, which incidentally are not actually real American flags. Mm -hmm. If you look closely, they, they're missing some stars or they're missing some stripes. And that's so they don't have to take them down every night. Because they do worry about that. They want to follow proper protocols. So if they had actual real um, flags on top of their lightning pole, lightning poles, um, then they would have to take them down every night. Mm -hmm. The only real flag is actually in the square at the front with the flag, with the, where the flag retreat is done. So um, I, I always go, well, that's kind of weird though. It like, Halloween and Christmas when they're changing things around, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, pay attention next time. You'll see that, you know, it's always like a kind of a party, you know, even right now with all of the um, COVID procedures going on, um, you know, you still got the band coming down the street. You still got the parade type things going on. And uh, it's always a lot of fun. I think I love walking on main street USA. Um, and the last trip I took, I actually finally got to see the trolley show for the first time. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing, you know, walk, walking right down the middle of Main Street USA <laughs> for years. How long has that been around? And I finally got to see that trolley show. And I got to tell you, that's one of the best ways to start a day at Magic Kingdom. It really just perks you up. And the dancing from the, the performers there, that just is great. So, uh Get, if you get time, definitely, definitely check that out. It's usually a morning thing. I think the last mm -hmm. performance is around noon. Um, so something to check out when that does come back. Um, yeah, so I hope that gives you guys some information towards Marceline and how we went from Marceline to the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and that, that trolley show, they're actually doing it. Um up top at the uh, in the train station uh and i know that because i ran 
I ran right past it as I was uh, uh, running into Magic Kingdom this time. Um, and, uh, and and that's just something that I just don't really ever take time to. And it's funny because I, if if you know me, you know that I am in the theater world and um, shows and stuff. That's kind of like what I do. Um, and for some reason, uh, we always end up kind of running right past those and go going to do rides. Um, and that kind of goes with all of this stuff is you could you could take probably an entire day and just kind of like peruse around main street and just kind of like take everything in um and it's uh, honestly it's it's something i've always wanted to do uh i've always felt like i don't really have time to dedicate to that but it's always great to like it's just such a good way to um start your day at the magic kingdom with with walking down the middle of main street usa um and just like how it just sets you up so perfectly for everything yeah it really does and you know, it kind of gives you that party, you know, like it's a party atmosphere to me, like we're mm-hmm. celebrating something and let's get in there and let's go have some fun. Um, the, you talked about walking around and just checking out all the little things that's going on. And I've done that. I've tried to do that a few times and we we're watching a video the other day and between the fire station and the entrance to the Emporium, like where the barbershop is and stuff in those windows, they actually have moving figures um, about like different movies. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea those were there. (laughs) (laughs) So, and I've been over there. So uh, on my next trip, I'm going to have to make sure that I get over there and check that out. I hadn't, Mm -hmm. I don't remember those seeing those. So yeah it's it's always it's always very cool and i always end up kind of doing the typical thing where i'll i've gone to the starbucks over there before a couple times and and i think i've walked into the bakery too um but i just do that typical thing where i i kind of run past all of that and then at the end of uh my time at the magic kingdom i end up walking through the emporium and i don't think i've ever been in that emporium and not been completely exhausted (laughs) it's always the last thing we do and so and and that it's such a great shopping area and it's funny now i've been there so many times that like i know it so well so like i i know and and they haven't really changed anything so i know where everything is located like i know how to get to like what i want to look at um and it's just so funny how we'll go in there and it's such such a cool place to shop uh, and it's always kind of the last thing we do. So we're always just kind of like dragging ourselves trying to get through there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a good just, tip anytime is is kind of trying to sneak through the Emporium on your way out. Not as many oh, yeah. people in your way. But yeah, right right now they're making you you wait to get into the Emporium. So, yeah. Okay. So I guess that doesn't quite work. Yeah, <laughs> I was actually in there uh, first thing in the morning one time because we needed another uh, memory card for our camera, and mm. we we were planning to be in the park that morning and realized it that morning. So we went straight in there when we got in, and they were able to get us a memory stick or memory card to put in there, and it was cool because it came with some stock photos on it. <laughs> that they had taken already so you know it was like my wife took some amazing pictures while we were there I've, we've got one hanging up of the emporium that i thought was just a really cool angle that she had taken a picture of um so it, you know it was well worth the money that we spent um which i, I don't know we probably paid double for the memory card but mm-hmm. whatever we needed it and hey we got some <laughs> pictures out of it so yeah <laughs> One of the things I've always thought would be cool is, uh, I, and I don't know, Brian, you probably know this, uh, but here's another hidden gem. You can actually get your hair cut uh, uh, right in Main Street. Uh, they have a, a barber there. And I always thought it would be cool to go and, and get my hair cut and then like walk around Disney with my new haircut. Um, but that would, that would be like a, uh, if I lived in Disney type thing. <laughs> Yeah. And it's been closed with COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know like Tim Tracker, they've been wanting to do Jackson's first haircut there. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if think it's going to happen for him, but um, yeah, I've wanted to do that too. And I think right before the closure, 
I had learned that they were doing um, 60 day out reservations, which they hadn't been doing before. It was always a walk up type of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, but it's only 20 bucks. Yeah. To get a haircut. Mm-hmm. And they'll even do pixie dust if you want it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, someday I'm going to get my haircut there too. I thought oh, that yeah. was really cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just talk about a little bit of Main Street. I mean, there's the firehouse, which used to house Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, they've put the fire truck in there now that, um, you know, on, in regular times, they it's usually driving up and down the street in the morning. Um, they have a stable, which I, we have seen the horse in there once in a while. One mm-hmm. or two horses kept there that might be being used for the trolley or the uh, parade. Um so they have the stable there that's usually open. Um, what else? We got the city hall, which is guest services. Um, on the other side is a theater, which typically housed Mickey and Tinkerbell for their meet and greets, which aren't being used right now. Um, uh, but yeah, that theater now is, I mean, it's more merchandise, and then it's actually a lot of, um, it's kind of like a second little um, area where you like, like, uh, like where you can figure out some magic band stuff. It houses a lot of magic bands in there, um, but it's also in the the back end. Uh, there's more artwork in there, um, so like some artwork things that you can buy and stuff like that. So um, they threw some more merchandise in there, uh, probably just because they can't have meet and greets right now. So yeah, okay, that's cool. Um, back in the day when, back in the day, so when <laughs> I was on my honeymoon, um, which was 2002, they had little movie sets. Mm. Um, so I've got some crazy pictures between, uh, one with my wife, one with me, um, cause obviously we were the ones taking the picture, but you know, like one is, was, uh, 101 Dalmatians and a TV and you get to put yourself in the middle of the picture. And, <laughs> um, I think there was one with the seven dwarfs type of thing, uh, so that was cool. And Tony's restaurant is there, which is Lady and the Tramp. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can sit outside and eat there, which is cool. Also, if they're doing parades, because then you can just be eating and watching them go by, you know, mm-hmm. if you time it right. Uh, and then around, you go around the corner towards the bakery. You've got, what, the Chapeau? Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, where they so. sell a lot of hats and ears, mm-hmm. right? Hats, hats and ears, and I think that's usually where I, they they sell a lot of keychains there, and that's usually where I get the the I always get like a little keychain, and it's the same kind uh, every single time, just different colors. Um, so that's that's uh, a little little tidbit there about my trips. That's where I always buy that. <laughs> okay, and I think that's a great place to go to have your like ears personalized if mm-hmm. you want your yep, name. Yep, they have back. that in there. Yeah. I did that one of our first trips with the kids. I had one done. Um, so yeah, lots of cool stuff along that along the main street. Um, you know, there's no big rides or main attractions, but there's so many cool things to see there. It's mm-hmm. worth taking the time. Definitely. Cool. Well, uh, Brian, do you do you have anything more for us? <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a bit. Um, you know, if anybody wants to talk about it more, definitely hit me up on Facebook. Use the Facebook page or in our group, the main, uh, the Miles from Main Street community. Definitely come on out there and, and pose some questions and we'll see if we can get them answered or, you know, we can have a discussion about it. And I'd love to do that with some of you guys and all of you guys if you want. So <laughs> definitely, uh, you know, hit us up out there. I'm going to put pictures that I have if I can find them out on Facebook and most of them probably end up in the community group I don't Mm want to put a ton of them on the page and kind of bog that down but you know I'll get some out on the page as well so uh, some of the things I talked about you guys will be able to see there awesome sounds awesome cool well that's all we got for you guys tonight thanks for listening and catch us next time on miles from main street 
Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us on iTunes and subscribe. Email us at milesfrommainstreetpodcast at gmail.com with any thoughts and visit us on Facebook under Miles from Main Street. We'll be bringing more to you weekly and look forward to talking to you then. Until next week, remember, some live close, but most of us don't. So let's talk about it. Mm-hmm.